little bit different today because we've got no guns clearly as you can see what what i've done is i've put four maruku catalogues on the table here and a, a little handbook which we'll move on to now these are these are late 70s to early 80s catalogues this one I was given by my gunsmith and we will have a look through and we will talk a little bit about this book now these three books this one this one and this one I was sent by a very nice guy called Dave in York thank you very much Dave for sending me these and what I'm what I'm going to ask Paul to do is I'm going to get Paul to scan each one of these onto the computer. And are we going to put them on Facebook or are we going to put them on Instagram? Uh, Facebook probably going to be best. Facebook will be the best one. Share. Okay, so and what you'll do in the description at the bottom, you'll put a link to the Facebook page where these are on. Can you do that? Yeah, uh, so no, Facebook will just be a post. I mean, we can put a bit on the website about it and link it on today. If you put it on the website, so yeah. if anybody looks at the video at a later stage, they can yeah. look at these, these books. Yeah. Now, one of these books, this one here, is marked to say it's 1981-1982 catalogue. This one isn't marked to say what year it is. And this one is written in Belgium and English. But what's very nice is on the back of this one we've got the models of the engraving. On in this one we've got models of engraving. In this one we've got models of engraving. And in this one, which is very, very nice, we've got the three different grades of Maruku President that they released, the G11, the G12, and the G13. And if you watch some of the earlier videos, you'll see that I didn't quite get it right the first time. Well, hopefully we can uh, we can get this spot on this time so yeah Paul if you want to bring the camera over and what we'll start doing is just opening the books up and looking so I'll start with with this one because this has got the two pictures of the the G12 and with the help of this book we've deduced that this is a G13 now one of the things that is quite interesting about this book Paul is the fact that we've got no sporter on this uh, no sporting model on yep. this so when over and unders were in their infancy to the masses so we're talking late 70s early 80s it was still the sport was still predominantly Rule by side by sides. That's changing a little bit now. So we've got trap and skeet. So with your trap gun, you would have 30 to 32 inch barrels with three quarters and full choking. With skeet guns, you've got 26, 27, or 28 inch barrels, and generally they come with cylinder choke. As I mentioned in one of the other videos, brown in B25s come with quarter choke. So what I'm trying to get to is if you wanted a sporting gun in the in the early 80s, you generally had to grab hold of a trap gun. You had to take the chokes out of the trap gun. You had to either bend the comb, bend the stock down, or you had to rub the comb off to get your two and a quarter, two and a half inches a drop. The reason that you can't find any sporting clay guns in the Maruku range from the late 70s, early 80s is because I didn't make them, basically. So we've got this book here, and I'll move on to this one at the end, Paul. Yeah. So I have had a good read through each piece of this. Now... I don't read Belgium, I don't read English very well. That's either Belgium or French, basically. And yeah, what it tells you. I wouldn't you have when... a clue either. No, somebody <laughs> will know, Paul. But when you read through the paperwork here, it's just a, a very quick outline of the Maruku factory, basically. But we will put a video on the uh, pictures on the internet of each page so people can see them. 
and let's open it up so with this one Paul you've got a three eight hundred gain in a chase grade four okay mm -hmm. now when you look very closely this is the engraving that we done a video of a three seven hundred hs i believe it was yeah and again this is just a quick overview of the guns themselves the game guns 26 28 30 these are your specifications for drop and for chamber length and barrel length and chokes and ribs and weights and everything. But as I say, if you want to read them, if you can see the pictures on the internet. And what we've got now, the lower grade stuff, Paul, the, the grade ones, the grade twos, they don't interest me as much as say this 3800 HSW, this 3800S, this 3700S. Now, that's not to say, and I've never seen one of these guns, uh, 3650. I have seen the double trigger Maruku, but it wasn't quite like that one. So, although it's very interesting, it's the engraving that I am looking for, okay? So what we've got here, Paul, is we've got a Maruku 6000 yeah. in Sporting. We've got a Maruku 8000 in Sporting. And we can also see, very much like a Krikov, I believe that you can adjust the point of aim on this gun. Trap guns, skeet guns, shoot point of aim slightly differently. If you do the research on the internet, you'll find that out yourself. So, with the different books that we've got, and I am going a little bit slow, what you can do is you can tie yourself in knots because not all of the models on this page carry over properly to this page. So, we've got a Maruku 4800 trap, and if you can go in on that closely, Paul, yeah. if it's coming out on the screen, people will see that that is similar engraving to an MK60 or an MK70 Maruku of modern standard. We've also got over here, Paul, we've got a 3800 Skeet in a grade four. Yeah. And the most interesting bit about this book, and I am, I don't want it to go on too long. The most interesting book about, the most interesting piece about this book is the fact that on the back page, we've got your different engraving and your higher grades. So a 3800 Chase 4, we've got a 7000 Game Chase 3, we've got a 6000 Sporting, that does say Chase, doesn't it? I keep saying Chase. Yeah, yeah it's going to be, uh, it's going to be French it's or going to be something French like that again, again ain't it? it? Could well be. Oh dear. <laughs> their, their word of grade, basically. So there's a grade 1, a 4800 Grade 1 Trap, a 3800 Grade 3 Skeet, which again looks very much like the like the HS we had. You've got a 3800 Skeet, Grade 2, Grade 3, and an 8000 Sporting Grade 1 with a game scene on the side. And you've got this gun here, Paul. Obviously, we've got a 7000 Grade 3, so... Yeah. Let's, let's confuse people a little bit. Mm -hmm. If people see, can you see that this engraving yeah. and this engraving look very similar? Yep. Other than the fact that this is a black action and this is a silver action. Yep. Years ago, you could specify what finish you wanted, whether you wanted coin finish or you wanted black or black chrome. or I think black chrome was, was finished by this era, but you could have a black action or a silver action. Yep. <clears throat> now... This is how close you have to look at things, Paul. This was printed in Belgium, okay? And what I find very, very interesting, see this piece here? Yep. I believe that says editor. Yep. And then it says the word responsible. Yep. Editor responsible, okay? Just a very mm -hmm. interesting way of, 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 of writing who was responsible for it. And I will put 
I will put, or I'll ask you to put a picture on the internet. There is something about this picture that is obviously wrong, okay? It's not a competition. I just hope mm -hmm. in the comments below people can put, there's an obvious mistake with that picture. What is it? Now, again, Paul, when we're looking very, very closely, we've got the fact that this was printed in Japan. Yeah, all right. This was printed in Belgium. This was printed in Japan. And we've got your address of the Maruku Firearms MFG Co. And we've got a business address, and I believe that says Tokyo on it. It does, yep. And then if we go down a little bit further, and it says head office or main office headquarters. Yep. And then we go city, Kochi, That's it. prefecture. I believe the Japanese word prefecture is what we would call a county here in the UK. <clears throat> so let's put that book away. Let's open this book up here, which is a, a Maruku book. I don't quite know what, what date because it isn't marked, but this is very much like a Maruku MK70, MK60, MK38, Grey 5 engraving. And on the front page here, we've got a Maruku HS, which we had in the earlier book. <clears throat> it tells you a little brief history on the manufacturer to say they started in 1893. And then it tells you that they started making guns on the Maruku, on the Browning style in about 1966. It also tells you here somewhere, Paul, that they went into spear guns. Now, like I said, I don't read very well. Yeah, Somewhere on it. there, it talks about spear guns. Yep. It's a fancy way of saying harpoon gun for whaling. <laughs> so there's lots of different things that you should be looking at in this book. Now, we've got here, does that say Damask? It does say Damask, yeah. Damask. So the books contradict themselves ever so slightly because we've got a damask pattern engraving here and it is a type 4 or grade 5 basically so let's turn the page over and here we've got a type 3 or a grade 3 and you can see that the checkering is done by hand yeah okay uh, not done with a traditional checkering tool that's done with a dremel mm. and if you look very closely on the early ones you can see where it's been done with a dremel but this is a piece that we are looking to see, Paul. So we've got a Type 2 R with a bronze finish. Yeah. We've got a Type 2 R old silver, which if I open this book up, and I'm going from pillar to post and pillar to post, that is what this gun is. So a 3800R, sorry. Yep. This one, the 3800R, yep. but this is in black action, and this is in silver action. Now, we've got, again, when they start to contradict themselves ever so slightly, is we've got a Type 2 R, sorry, down here, I was still looking at the same one, <laughs> Type 2 W, which is yep. what we had in this book the other day. Yep. And I'm not, I'm not going to go for every single one, Paul. I'm, I'm literally just showing people the differences. We've also got here a, a T3S game sporting, uh, game shooting and sporting there. We've got a uh, Type 3. So with this one, we've omitted the HS. Yeah. Now, no, we're here, HS. I keep moving down. <laughs> type 4. SW and HS, and then this is the highest grade of the standard Marukus that you can find, which is a HSW. Hopefully, we can move on to the HSW when I've sourced it. We've got a little description there, Paul, about Browning Invector chokes. They don't look like Invector Plus, they look like Invectors. It's, as I keep saying, it's the engraving we're looking for, Paul. It's, yeah. it's not so much this. Now... I'm going to talk very, very briefly about this gun 
This is a Maruku 3000 that was bought out in the early 80s. Not my favourite design. Um, there is a few manufacturers, one specifically that's taken this design to a very high level. This is similar to a Remington 3200, it is similar to a Velmet, and then you've got German manufacturer that takes this to a very high level. Not my favourite gun, nothing wrong with it, but let's move on <laughs> swiftly, I think they call it. So we've got Maruku 4800 and 7000. Again, we will move on a little bit because we're going to get, or well, Paul's going to put some pictures on the Facebook. Yeah. So this is similar to a Maruku MK70, MK60 of, of today. You've got a grade three there. You've got a 7000 grade one trap. You've got a grade three gain. You've got a, interestingly enough, why this one's called a 4800 trap and skeet, a trap and sporting, and why this one's just called a grade three. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Uh, and now we've moved on to this one, where it was a 3650. It's now just called a grade three trap. <laughs> and this, oh no, let's see what else we've got in this book. Uh, we've got a few trap guns, Paul, talking about trap guns, basically. Uh, what they are, why you should choose a Browning or a Maruku because they are one of the best handling guns in the world. And Maruku Sporting Range, again with the models, the barrel lengths, the stocks, the fore ends. And this one I haven't seen, probably because it was quite a lot more money and people didn't feel they wanted to buy it. <laughs> and that is this one. So this book is early 80s and we've got barrel weighting systems all that time ago yeah which i've not seen one of those and then we move on to maruku game guns okay and again we won't go too much on them because we're going to ask paul to put a picture on the Thank internet you. get all the pictures on the website this is the most important one of the lot paul and as i said i was given this book i, I was loaned this book by a very nice man from york called dave you'll know who he is and this is a reason why I'm very pleased to show you this book, Paul, because this is your BC Maruku custom grade. Yeah. As we had the Maruku president the other day. So if you can go in very close, Paul, we've got a G11, yep. which is scroll engraved. Yep. We've got a G12 here, which is what we had uh, a couple of weeks ago. Now, interestingly enough, if you come back to here, Paul, this is the only Maruku president, and as I said, we've had a few, it's the only Maruku president I've seen with a recoil pad fitted from the factory. Yeah. And we've got a G11, a G13, sorry, <clears throat> a G13, which the, the pictures are clear enough. If anybody has a look on Google and just types in brown in Midas grade, brown in B25 Midas grade, this gun will come back, okay? As we spoke earlier on about artistic license. Now this is a, a 1981-82 book. If you come up here. Yep, right there. Yep. It's marked to say it's 81-82. Yeah. Now, I'm trying to think of things. Again, this book, Paul, and this book, these yep. two books say very much the same thing about the Maruku company. They are in Japan. Browning went to them because they use high, high, high quality production. Maruku is one of the highest in the world. And yeah, G11, G12, and G13. I had a, a very brief conversation with a guy that loaned me these books to say that he was in the gun trade for 35 years and he tried to buy one of these guns when they were new to the market in the early 80s and he could never source one. Hmm. So even though Browning are offering this, it has always been a premium product that has been hard to find the Maruku President Ranger stuff. There we go, yep. And what we move on to here is we've got... BC Maruku 6000 trap. And if you come in very closely, Paul, at this, people will see, if it focuses, that that is 
almost the same engraving is pretty well close to what you're going to get on a grade 5 maruku mk38 mk70 of of modern standard you've also got down here a grade 3 6000 you've got a grade 1 and then interestingly enough paul this is a grade 3 and this is a grade 3 if you go in on the engraving you will see that they differ in the fact that one hasn't got any engraving on it no, yeah, so how could you yeah. call it a grade three yeah and then this one has got engraving on it hmm. and you will also see that we've got a high step rib on this gun so this is 1981 82 high step ribs are not a modern thing by any standards and here these are interesting paul because i haven't seen any of these yeah these are called they're called special chokes here but they're called spreader chokes okay what they do is they spread the shot as wide as they can they were banned very quickly well that they was on that six thousand skeet they are multi-chokes that screw in oh, so right. they're a multi-choke that you could buy called a spreader choke so let's hope let's move on a little bit further and what we will do paul in a minute if people can stick the video is we'll move on to this yep. and this has got some real special stuff in it so we've got three eight hundred grade one grade two and another grade one in your black action and your silver action as i said you can specify between the two you can also see that this one has got a beaver tail four end on it yeah and this one is not quite as beaver tail to be honest with you it's not schnabel obviously but it, it, if you could see the picture here in front of you you would see that they are two different and this one's got a monte carlo stock on it as well and yeah that is that book finished paul and again these are the specifications of the guns and this is your grade three again which as i said i've not seen one of those and these are your different frames frame configurations actions triggers trigger guard tail barrel plate what's that say barrel plate woods woods four end woods yeah i can't read it upside down <laughs> checkering patterns eight lines to the inch nine lines to the inch or centimeter in that case teardrops finishes of wood and engraves of wood basically and that is that's this happened. I was given by my gunsmith, Paul. This is a Maruku instruction manual from the factory. I've had a good re read through it, and it's got some very interesting pieces in it. And it has... Somebody asked us about a Maruku ORE. Yep. This is the inspection certificate. And again, Paul, what I'm doing is grabbing a gun out of the rack here. <laughs> That's a, an inspection. That's, a, that's an inspection certificate, Paul. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you on this gun what I said in one of the other videos was I'd never quite worked out what these markings were for. Okay, so the top mark, and if I read it to you, yeah, I'll have to read it to you. The top marking is proof mark showing all the necessary tests have been done, which is top one. this one. And then the second one with the SP, in fact, the SP and the MP, even though they're on top of each other, on this one, they look like they mean the same wording. Okay? Yeah. And that is... That is... Proof marks on smokeless powders, pressure proof. Oh no. So, MP is proof mark on special smokeless. Yep. No, scary oh, me. Proof mark on smokeless powder is the MP. And then the SP is pressure proof, basically. Yep. So, what I said is, I didn't quite know what it went. Well, this book here tells us. Well, this. Go. This tells us. And you can see here, which again is interesting, Paul, is you've got Maruku Firearms Co. Tokyo, Japan. Yep. 
Right, now, this little book here, Paul, is full, 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 full of very interesting stuff. On the front page here, we've got Maruku Cyber Sides, we've got uh, Maruku Over and Under, which is going to be uh, HSW. And we've got a little breakdown of what they are, foresight bead, barrels, 4N, uh, catch lever, action, trigger guard, stop, top lever, safety catch. And we've got assembly and disassembly. I won't go through it because most of the people that are watching these videos will know how to do it. And as I keep saying, if you look on our internet or our website, there will be a picture of each one of these to see. This, this is the interesting bit for me, Paul, because I didn't know that Maruku made snap caps. I've never mm. seen a Maruku snap cap. And we've got Maruku cleaning kits. Yeah. The reason that I'm pointing these cleaning kits out, Paul, is because in later videos, we are going to move on to guns that have come from the factory with these cleaning kits. Steve... Just do me a favour. What does NB mean? Because I thought it meant newbie. Shows you it. In. NB. Note well. Note well. Thank you very much, mate. <laughs> so, please, people read this. But, Paul, through that screen, because I can't read yep. it very well, what does number four say? Uh, on any occasion, the gun must not be trained on a person, thus to make it your habit. Okay, and I thought that that was a lovely saying. All yeah. right, we won't iterate any more than that. But I thought MB meant newbie, and Steve tells me it means note well, which is Latin for awareness, Steve. Awareness, yeah, good, good. <laughs> so there's just one little piece of the book there, and we've got a description of what the safety catch does, basically the S, the O, and the U. Again... I haven't read this. I have read it, but I haven't read it in the last couple of days, so I won't tell you what that says. Now, again, Paul, this is what's very interesting about this book, is we've got the fact that a Maruku gun case, what's it say? This is a must for any owner. Yeah. Now, the reason I'm pointing this out, Paul, I have only ever seen one of these cases... And the case that I've got has got a particularly, and I mean very unusual Maruku in it, and we will move on to it. Also, what is annoying is that has got a picture of a Maruku I've never seen in it. All right. <laughs> see that gun leaning yeah. there? Yeah. The, the, you can't see it. No. But what I know about Marukus is that is not a standard Maruku, and I would love to see what that gun looked <laughs> like but you can't, so it's just showing you. I also didn't know Maruku made scopes. No. Okay? They look like typical Japanese quality of the late 70s, early 80s. Yeah. Uh, but they're, they're out there if people find them. Also, Maruku made re reproduction guns, Kentucky Long Rifle, and we've got uh, 101, a Model 101 standard, and a Model 400 Deluxe. The most interesting bit about this book, Paul, is this in the back page. Let's start at the bottom. Let's start at the bottom. We've got a Model MSSE. And again, you can't see them 100%. We've no. got a Model 500. This is your side-by-side -side range. Somebody asked us, thank you very much for asking, about a Model ORE. Now, I don't like to say it's at the bottom of the page, but that's where it is. It's uh, entry level. So we've got an ORE. We've got a model 650. We've got a model 700. We've got a model 800. We've got a model 800W, which is what we've done on the little skate gun the other day. We've got a model 800S. We've got an 800SW. And then at the top of the tree here, we've got a model HSW. Yep. Okay, so hopefully the people can stick these videos to the end because that was a long one, wasn't it? <laughs> it was. Even Paul's getting bored of holding the camera <laughs> now. So yes, Paul, it's also have a look on the back of there. So this is the this is the instruction book case. And what age was that? This one. Yeah. I couldn't tell you, Paul. 
I would think, again, 78, 79, something yeah. like that. Not quite the 80s. So we've got Maruku Firearms Co. We've got your business administration address, again, which is Japan. Yeah. And we've got the, the head office of head office and factory is at Co Kochi. Kochi, yep. Kochi. And we've got the fact that they're manufacturers of shotguns, rifles, pistols, harpoon guns, <laughs> harpoon guns, scopes and accessories, plastic moulding. Hmm. So, yeah, just another little video. They did do a fair old bit out of that factory then. Oh, mate, they've done some lovely stuff. And... Yeah, thanks very much. Another little video.